Hello and welcome to Mr. Brandt's fifth grade everyday math review. In this video, we're going to be going over lesson 4.2, which is representing decimals through thousandths. Like the last video, uh, we used a tenths, hundredths, and thousandths square. Uh, this square is the tenth square. And the reason this is the tenth square is because there are ten sections and each section represents one-tenth as a fraction, or we could write that as 0.1 for a decimal. This square is the hundredths square. And this square is a hundredths square because one of these equals one-hundredth or 0 decimal zero 01 and there are 100 of these small squares in the in the whole square which brings us to the thousandths square and in this square each tiny rectangle is equal to 1 thousandth or zero decimal zero zero one and there are one thousand of these tiny rectangles in the whole square on your home link you're going to be asked to um, name equivalent names for a decimal in a name collection box so let's start with the example of 2700 so we have zero zero decimal 27 and we need three equivalent names for or we need three different names that are equivalent to 27 hundredths and the first one that we're going to do is a decimal and the name collection box it's not going to be drawn the absolute greatest but it, it looks something like this Okay, for a decimal, I'm going to start by shading in, roughly shading in, 27 hundredths. So that's 20 hundredths. And that gives me 27 hundredths. I can't make 27 hundredths on the tenths square, but I can on the thousandths square. And so I'm going to start, that's a little hard to read. I'm going to get a darker color here. So I'm going to start by shading in the 20 hundredths again, just like I did on the other one. And now I'm going to shade in the 7 hundredths. Each of these squares is still 1 hundredth. So I've, I've just shaded in 27 hundredths, but I've also shaded in 270 thousandths. When we're dealing with decimals, if you add a zero to the end, you still, you have the same amount. You've just changed the size of the pieces. You've made them smaller. So 27 hundredths is equivalent to 270 thousandths. Now for the name, um, or excuse me, for the next one, we're going to go with a, with a word in 27 hundredths written as a word. We could go zero because we say what's in front of the decimal first. At the decimal, we say and. Zero and. Then we say the number after the decimal. So that's 27. Zero and 27 we look at the last digit that's in the hundredths place, so we write down that place value, hundredths, zero and 27 hundredths. Then the last section, um, we're going to go with a fraction, 
and your teacher might have different expectations for how you fill out your uh, name collection box. For our class, we're going to go with a decimal, a word, and a fraction. So when we're reading these as a fraction, we think about the THS word. So in this case, 0 and 27 hundredths, the THS word is hundredths. That tells us what our denominator is. So our denominator is going to be 100. Our numerator is the number that comes after the decimal point. So in this case, it's 27. All three of those are equivalent names or equivalent ways of saying 27 hundredths. For our next example, we're going to go with 0 decimal 4. And 0 decimal 4 is the 4 is in the tenths place. The 4 is in the tenths place. So I'm going to shade in 4 tenths. Oops, don't know what happened there. That was crazy. Okay, there's my four tenths shaded in. Uh, equivalent name for a fraction, we could do either hundredths or thousands. So for the hundredths, we could go out to four, or we could do four tenths for the hundredths. Then if I roughly shade all of that in, I now have 4 tenths, but I also could write that as 40 hundredths. Or, given another choice, if I filled in 4 tenths on the thousandths square, So as you can see, they're the same. It's the same amount in every one. It's just that the size of the pieces are different. So for this, um, we could write it as 400 thousandths. So 4 tenths, 40 hundredths, and 400 thousandths are equivalent. Then for the word, again, we say what, or the word is kind of sa the same as how we would read it. So in front of the decimal, we have a zero. 0, at the decimal we say and, the number after the decimal is 4, the 4 is in the tenths place, so we write down the place value, and the word, uh, the equivalent word for 4 tenths is 0 and 4 tenths, and then for the fraction, again we look at what place the last digit is, so the 4 is in the tenths place, so that gives us a denominator of 10. The decimal, or the digit after the decimal is four. That would be four tenths. And since there's no, there's no whole number, um, it's a zero, we can leave that blank. Uh, if this would happen to be like 2.4, we could, we could put our two out in front. But there's our name collection box completed for four tenths. For my practice, for our practice problem on this home link, it's a division problem. And I'm going to start by doing some estimating. So I'm going to start by rounding. And I'm going to round 43 to 40. So my divisor is going to be 40 when I estimate. Then I'm going to think about what is a multiple of 4 that gets close to 26. So how many groups of 4 can I get from 26? Uh, that would be 4, and it's 24. So I'm going to change my dividend 2,694 to 2,400 for my estimate. With both of these ending with 0, and since we're doing mental math, I know that I can cancel out both of the zeros. There are 4, or excuse me, there are 6 4s and 24, and then I have a 0 left over. So my actual answer for this problem should be close to 60. So I'm going to put that over here as a reminder. And now I'm going to go ahead and work out the problem. So 
so I start with dividing. I can't get any forty groups of 43 from 2. I can't get any groups of 43 from 26. So now I have to figure out how many 43s can I get from 269. And I'm actually going to go back to my estimate and think about this 6 here. And I'm going to try 43 times 6. 3 times 6 is 18. 4 times 6 is 24 plus 1 is 25. It gives me 258. So that's that works because it's less than 269. So there are six groups of 43 in 269. Then I multiply. So 6 times 43 is 258. After I multiply, I subtract. 269 subtract 258. 9 minus 8 is 1. 6 minus 5 is 1. Then 2 subtract 2 is 0. Compare. Uh, 11 is less than 43. So now I can bring down the next number, bring down my 4. And now I'm back to dividing. So now I have 114 divided by 43. I, Using my um, estimate, and I'm going to look at just the 4, I can't get any 4s from 1, and I can't get any 4s from, or excuse me, I can get two 4s from 11. So I'm going to try 43 times 2, and that gives me 86. And I'm confident that I can't get any more 43s into that. So 114 divided by 43 is 2. Then I multiply. 2 times 43 is 86. Now it's time to subtract. From the top down, I can't do 4 subtract 6. I can't do 1 subtract 8, so I'm going to borrow from the 1. 14 subtract 6 is 8. 10 subtract 8 is 2. There is nothing more to bring down. Or excuse me, 28 is less than 43. There's nothing more to bring down. So it's time for my remainder. So my correct answer is 62 remainder 28. And that's close to my original estimate of 60. Been having some longer videos here lately. Uh, thanks for sticking, sticking through it. And we'll see you tomorrow.